I usually think that Hekna Bank is just something out of a movie, that this system must have the best security, and that's even not worth trying. I used to think that way too, but one day, while doing my regular buggy bounty, I found a relatively simple vulnerability, one that not only allowed me to list all users' informations, but also their credit and debit card in making payments and much more. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. For those who don't know me, my name is Marco, I'm a senior software engineer and and also cybersecurity enthusiast. This video is being sponsored by YT2 article, an AI powered tool that transforms YouTube videos into posts for social media and also blogs. Click the link in the description and check it out. Now back to the video, as I mentioned, this was a very simple vulnerability and that was basically an AI door affecting multiple endpoints. But even though it was simple, it still challenged me a bit. So I'll break down here for you step by step. For those unfamiliar with IDOR, IDOR is a backend access control flaw that happens when an application uses user input to access directly into some objects in the database, usually via an ID, without verifying if the requester actually has permission to access it. The most basic attack would be an endpoint that returns user info based on the root param ID given in the request URL, but fails to check the user is authorized to view the data. Okay, so I developed here a vulnerable API that is vulnerable to this either. I'm basically the API that have some endpoints here uh, and a login endpoint. I I'm using a fake database for this example, but it's the same thing with a database that uses SQL or NoSQL. Uh, I have the Alice and Bob users here, both have some credit cards. So what happens when I use this out here, users use your ID cards. So let me show an example. I will be doing a login here first using this user. This user is Alice. As you can see, it ends with a A4. A4. When I grab this JWT, I can confirm that this JWT belongs to Alice by testing this platform from jwt.io and here we can see that this ID is Alice's ID. Okay, let's go over to our first example. What happens when I add this JWT here, get the Alice's user ID and execute this request. This request is supposed to list my cards. I have a user ID here and when I hit send, it works well. It lists my credit card, card 123, card 456. As you can see, this card belongs to Alice. But what happens when we execute the same request with the same JWT token, but now passing Bob's ID. As you can see, no error was displayed for us and the response returned for us the cards from Bob's. So the problem here is happening because developer fails to check if the user that is requesting the cards has the user ID that he's requesting. A quick fix here would be to validate if the user ID we received is different from the user ID from the JWT token. If it's different, you return a tutorial tree JSON forbidden throw. For example, let me start and stop my API here. And now, when I use the same request that I showed this vulnerable before, my API now returns with a forbidden request. Now, if I get Alice's YID here and put in the request, as we can see, the request is now working well. I can tell you the name of the program that I found this vulnerability because it has not been disclosed yet. But this is a company that I'm very active in this bug bounty program, so I always keep an eye on the date. While casually browsing the Banks app, I notice a newly added feature, and like anyone in the bug mount scene, the moment I see something new, I rush into testing it, because in this game, the winner takes it all. This new feature was designed to help users to save money by creating like a piggy bank, a special place in the app that its money will be reserved to a special goal. I started with the most basic testing, trying to deposit negative amounts, exceeding my account balance, and executing a standard IDOR by replacing the ID on the URL, but none of the work. Then I spotted something new in the header, and header called X account ID caught my attention. So I began testing. First, I created a second account. This account will be the victim of my attack. My account number one will be my attacker. On the victim's account, I created a new piggy bank. My focus will be to try accessing this piggy bank details with my attacker's account. So the step by step is, first, I logged in into my attacker's account. I intercepted the request to list my piggy bank, replaced the X account ID with my victim's account ID, and to my surprise, the response returned the data from the victim's account. Unlikely typical IDORs where the issue is on the URL, this vulnerability was in the headers. The application uses this X account ID to determine which user's piggy banks will be returned in my database queries. Just this alone was already a valid vulnerability, meaning I could report and get paid. But two things came to mind. First, the user ID was an UI ID, random non-sequential and unpredictable values, making brute force almost impossible. 
If you don't know what a YID is, YID basically is a 32 digits long separated by dashes here, ID, that is a universally unique identifier generated by random numbers. This is especially really hard to brute force, so this is why yeah, attack complexity be very high in this scenario and mostly impossible. Let's check, for example, what ChatGPT thinks about this YID. I ask, um, how many times would be necessary to brute force how YID stays on this one? So, as you can see, the combinations is really wrong and in chat GPT exchanges it would be necessary 13 billion years to brute force how ideas in NLP. There is two versions that is most popular using YIDs. The version 4 is the most popular. This version is completely random. It uses random numbers to generate but exists also a version 1 of the YID. The version 1 uses timestamps to generate the YIDs but maybe with this you can narrow down a little the amount of combinations that you need but even with that it's really hard to brute force YIDs. If I reported the vulnerability as is, according to hacker runs guidelines, it would still be valid, but the attack complexity would be hated as high on the CVSS score, reducing its overall impact. Luckily, since I was familiar with this program, I knew of an endpoint that leaked it uses YIDs. This bank had a feature where users could generate and share payment links, and in the way this feature was designed, the user's IDs was exposed in the link. For example, the link was redacted.com slash user slash user ID slash payment. I did some Google Doc to search for payment links shared by users with the following format and found multiple results across the internet. Now I had a clear way to demonstrate how a hacker could easily find potential victims to execute his attack. At this point, I already had a high severity vulnerability. An attacker could actually read financial data from users. But I asked myself, would other endpoints be vulnerable to this exact same bug even if they didn't explicitly use the X account ID? So I started testing using the burp suite match and replace function. I created a rule to automatically add the X account ID with the victim's ID into all my requests. And then I started exploring the app again, clicking through different sections. To my shock, I began seeing data from my second account in multiple places. Okay, so here is what happened in this scenario. I have the same API that I showed before, it has this other rule, slash users card. What this how is doing basically is to verify if the header X account ID is present. If it's not present, it uses the users received from the JWT token. Let's test it out. So here's my request. Uh, let me get my JWT token again here. As you can see, this JWT belongs to Alice's. Same idea as Alice. So this is what happens when I run the request. First, it's returning my user's cards here. This is the expected behavior of this application. But as I showed before, it has an exploit. The developers, for some reason, use this header X account ID here to access another user's data. And I believe this idea is supposed to be secret. But as you can see, if an attacker discovers this ID and goes here to the headers of the request account ID and if I get Bob's ID now put it here as you can see the response is now sending information about Bob's card so this is what happens behind the scene I believe this header was not supposed to be accessed for normal users maybe it was supposed to be used by uh, admins or something like that but some way they exposed this header for me in some of the requests and I was able to access and exploit it I believe the best scenario here was to remove completely this information or if not possible, if for some kind of reason they need this header present here, what they need to do is to verify if the user has access to the account ID that is being used. For example, if account ID is different from hack.id, should return the same response error I showed before. Now if I rerun my API and execute the same request, now it's returning a forbidden response. That's huge. I went into full hackers mode, clicking every button on the application, test every input, testing everything to see how deep this vulnerability went. I tried. But if Finding account details, changing users' email, changing users' password, making transfers, withdrawals, everything I could think of. By the end of my testing, what started as a simple vulnerability that exposed financial data from users had escalated into something much bigger. I found that an attacker could make in app purchases using the victim's account balance, steal full debt and credit cards information, access complete bank transactions and statements, retrieving some Stripe payment gateway information, in short, a complete security disaster. This vulnerability was reported with maximum severity and I was awarded the highest payout available in their buggy bounty program. To wrap up, my biggest takeaway from this experience and my key advice to you is this. You need to know the application you're testing inside and out. Pick just one or two programs and use them daily. Get familiar with every page ever request from this application without details. That's the only way you can quickly spot changes and uncover potential vulnerabilities when something new is introduced. If you enjoyed this content, 
check out the next video I'm recommending you and see you there.